it's so cool to meet you. Likewise, how are you doing? I'm good. Do you mind if I do a really quick intro and then we can go straight into it? Please, 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 please. Cool. My next guest went to the famous Brit school, has had the likes of Beyonce sing her lyrics, has released tracks with Regard and Jax Jones, has just released her latest single, Natalie Don't, which has been um, touted as this generation's Jol uh, Jolene by Dolly Parton. Her music has had over 14 monthly, 14 million monthly listens. I could go on and on, but it's boring when I say it. Let's talk, talk to the person herself. It is Ray. Ray, wow. It's great to have you on the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. What an intro. Oh, well, that is all your work. Now, <laughs> I know in Natalie Don't, you mentioned, you referenced Jolene. Uh, I don't know why I'm making J Jolene um, French. French. Jolene. Yeah, Jolene. 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 <laughs> you reference Jolene. <laughs> But, you know, to actually have, a, have people saying, this is our Jolene of our, um, of our generation, how does that make you feel? Like, this is Dolly Parton. Yeah, that's, it's kind of nuts. And I guess, I mean, I kind of asked for it. I wrote <laughs> her name in the song. Um, but, yeah, I'm so in love with that song and Dolly Parton as one of the best songwriters we, who has ever lived and breathed. Um, and I remember hearing Jolene for the first time and how it stung my heart. And I just was like, Dolly, like, I'm so sorry she did that. Um, and I went through my own, I went through my own story. And so I wrote Natalie Don't and I wanted to make sure that I referenced where my inspiration came from, you know? Yeah. And then you actually posted about it the night before it was about to go live. You said, this is my at the moment, I think this is my favorite ever Ray track ever. What yeah. is it about this? Why is this your favorite? I don't know. I just, I just have a feeling. I feel like as, as a creative, all you kind of have in this industry to steer you is your gut feeling. And I remember creating this song and, and being like, this is special. I believe in it. I back it. And I'm, I really, I'm so excited for ears to hear it like I know when I've done something good in my head I just want every ear possible to listen so yeah it's just my gut I love it I'm so proud of it and it makes me happy but I'm also telling a sad story but it feels good and I love strings and brass and all these fusions of my favorite sounds yeah but See, that's the thing, isn't it, Ray? Because, like, I've heard you say, you know, in the past, I've released stuff because people have told me I have to release it. I'm not yeah. doing that anymore. I'm releasing my stuff. Yeah. And when you do release something that you are passionate about, it usually hits and connects with somebody else, doesn't it? You can tell when someone's faking it. I really feel you. And I think that's the case now more than ever. You know, it's, it's the people now who decide yeah. what wins and what doesn't win. You know, it's not like back in the day, you know, you watch Dream Girls and you just smack a bag of money down on the table and be like, radio, play this song. You know, the people have to decide. And that's why I think it's more important than ever to trust your gut as an artist, because it's very easy to have lots of people around you giving you opinions. Do this, don't do that, say this, be like this, look like this. But, you know, it's taken me a while to, to really stamp my ground and find my feet and be like, no, this is, this is how I want to... This is my music I want to put out. Yeah. I'm proud well, of it. Well, it's something you've known for a very long time. I mean, at the age of 10, you turned around, and so many of us do it, turn around and go, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to be an artist. And usually when a 10-year-old says that to you, people go, oh, isn't that sweet? Look at her dreams. <laughs> How did people take it when you said it? And then they realised, she's actually not kidding. She's following me <laughs> through. You know, I turn bless my dad I turned around to my dad and I was like dad I'm gonna be an artist I'm gonna be a songwriter and he was very much like wow this is crazy and when he was younger he moved down from Yorkshire up north to London to, and he was in a band and like they used to play gigs and tried to get their record deal and blah 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 so I think for him to see his daughter he was like oh no what's gonna happen but I'm kind of the kind of person when I put my mind to something, you can tell me no, you can tell me you can't do it, you can tell me how you're going to make it happen. But I'm just like, there's no other, it was just like tunnel vision, you know, and I found my love 
I worked really hard at it. I took every concert. I used to busk every charity gig I could find, you know, and gradually just slowly but surely started climbing the ladder to be where I am today. It's kind of crazy. What's it like going, because you started at the Brit School. One, yeah. what's it like getting into that? Like, is it full on trying to get in? And then once you're in it, what is that like to be around so many creatives? Well, it is an incredible school. It's quite an intense entry process. It's like um, you have to do, I, I auditioned for music, Strand, there's lots of different se segments. Um, you have to do like a written test, an oral test, a performance in front of like, all the kids who were auditioning, which was like oh so God. scary. Yeah. Um, it was like intense, but um, I made it in and I was just hugely excited, like the legends that have walked those halls. Um, and also it was like a, a whole new environment, you know, imagine throwing a bunch of like hormonal 14 year old, you know, success hungry teenagers into one classroom. Um, you get a really interesting environment and fusion of people, but I made some really good friends. I learned a lot. I, I improved my skills. They're very clear. They're like, this is not a fame school. This is where you come to perfect your craft, you know? And, um, and yeah. And then how do you go from that to, because that, that's not enough. Like people go, okay, I've made it here and that's it. I'm set on my journey. I can do whatever I want. But then that's when, as soon as you leave, that's when the hard work really starts. For sure. So how did you turn that opportunity into actual work? Well, I used to, I used to do, so I used to write songs every Friday after school. So I found a way to basically start doing sessions, which is where you like find producers um, from anywhere and you write songs. So I used to start Friday after school, I'd finish school, finish at 12 o'clock, I'd get on the train, go into London, go to my session. I would work Saturday, Sundays. So for me, it was like, I need to get good at this. So I did it all the time. I didn't really have a social life. Um, I was so in love with music and wanting to understand more about it, especially as I was young. I was 14, 15, 16, and I left school at 16 and pursued it full time, all in. And then, so you're doing that. And did you ever in your wildest dreams think that this, you know, just writing music on a Friday would lead to having writing camps, not in London, but in Ibiza with David Guetta? Like, <laughs> what was that all about? Insane. And David is one of my favourite people in the music industry, one of my best friends. He is a ball of life. He's this... And he's so in love with music. He's so in love. So when we crossed paths, it was accidentally we met because I was in the studio with someone that he knew and then he introduced me. And I actually said to him on that day, I was like, do you have any instrumentals lying around that you need a song written to? And he was like, yeah, actually I have this one. I have this big ray gum and listen to this. And I'm listening like, oh wow. And then he left the room and he came back an hour later and I'd written a song called Stay, which we then ended up releasing together like a few months later. But that's what it's just about, just taking every opportunity that comes yeah. your way, you know? So that's not mad enough, right? That that happens. Then I, I'm so fast forwarding all over the place, but I'm so in awe. You then um, get to hear Beyonce sing some of your lyrics when you got a writing credit on Better, um, the song that she released for The Lion King. Yeah. What is that moment like for you when you actually, like you're in there, you're doing the work and sometimes you don't realise when you do it. It's like, oh yeah, Beyonce signed on, blah, 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 blah. And then you hear it for the first time. Is that when you go, oh, holy shit, what is going on? It's nuts. Um, what was crazy was when we were at the Lion King premiere, she was on the red carpet and she was like, Ray, I was like, who me? She was like, we're, we're making bigger track one on the Lion King project. I love it. You know, I remember when she, I was writing a lot of songs. I was quite involved in the process and having her feedback and her, you know, positive feedback on my voice. She liked my backgrounds and my harmony so much. She kept them on the, the actual song, like, it's just something, it just, it's just nuts. It just really is. If you just keep sticking at your dreams, eventually it, it finds its way to just, you know, surprise you in the most incredible way. Yeah. But 
do you know what I love about you, Ray? There was Beyonce lifting you up. Because I think it's all about us all lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. And you could just go, okay, look at me. I'm making my way to the top. I'm getting to live my dreams. And sometimes people forget that there's others trying to do the same. Yeah. And you're all about inclusivity, diversity, raising up those voices that aren't raised. And, you know, it's one thing saying it, but you're actually doing it. So how are you making sure that, you know, other women can break into this industry and not just in front of the scenes, Mm. behind the scenes? where sometimes, unfortunately, we're not taken seriously enough. A hundred percent. And for me, that's what it's about most is, you know, we're seeing female artists out there in the charts, blowing us all away, representing for the women. But my, my issue is the lack of women behind the scenes, you know, the lack of women in the chairs, in the dominating chairs, in the middle of the studio, where we should be. There's, there's a really um, sad um, clip being circulated on Instagram in the writing community. Um, a writer called Sarah Hudson, who has written a lot of the new Dua Lipa stuff and writ Dark, Dark Horse of Katy Perry. Like she's an amazing, amazing songwriter and she shared this. And it's the statistics of how many women versus men are in the producing, like, if I get up you, you'll be in shock. There's like one female producer in Hot Hits on the Spotify playlist right now. And there's like a hundred and something men. It's not okay. It's not right. So in order to really see change, we as women have to make sure our rooms are female dominated. And I, I have a female engineer that I work with called Jenna, who we record all my vocals together. I'm working with female producers. My younger sister, who's just entered the music industry as a songwriter, and she's absolutely killing it. She's 16. She's pr- producing, like we're learning how to produce, how to engineer ourselves. Women, we have to just claim it now because it's just getting ridiculous and boring. Yeah. Um, and I'm sick and tired of just seeing men all over the credit. No offense, men, I love you, you're great, but this is not your time. Um, and yeah, my, my goal is striving to have songs and you look at the credits list and there's just women, 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 women. That is so rare and that's what I'm excited to see more of. Mm, well, I think we need to go out and seek. And if we seek and give those opportunities, that's how they happen. And it is all based on merit as well. It's not 100%. just because you're a woman. It's because you're a bloody talented woman and you deserve that seat. There you go. The table. Um, what I love about you as well is you won't be pushed. You won't be pushed into releasing an album, your debut album, because that's the next, next thing apparently you have to do. No, you are, though, going to release a seven-track project. Tell me about this. I'm so excited. I'm very excited too. This is my project on... Ooh, the seven stages of healing a broken heart. Um, I'm cool. I'm still figuring out my perfect title for this um, project, but it is basically about the seven stages of love and loss. And if you go on Google, you can Google the seven stages. I've kind of adjusted some of the stages a little bit, but it's basically, you know, you have from step one to feeling this pain and this you know, refusal to accept it to right at the end, acceptance and hope, being able to be like, I'm, I'm healed, I'm letting go, there's hope, new chapter, next. Um, and it took me forever, took me forever to finally be okay again. I'm very dramatic, but I'm really excited to show people my seven stages, how I felt, how I was dealing, my emotions, and making out the other side. I cannot wait to listen to that. In the meantime, Natalie Don't is out and your great guide to dealing with a, a broken heart as well. If we watch that video, there's the first, first couple of steps, yeah? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Advice I didn't take. Yeah. <laughs> Do any of us? No. <laughs> <laughs> but Ray, it was so great to chat to you. Um, cannot wait. Uh, loving Natalie Don't, but can't wait for the new stuff as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time.